Hello everyone, my name is Eric Bodden and I'm very happy to talk to you today about uh, how to do static analysis with Suit and what we also have been doing recently with the SIFT framework. Um, so I want to briefly introduce myself and then I'm going to talk about Suit, about its general functionalities, some internals, how to use it, but also some future development um, and some uh, tools that we have actually built on top of Suit. And last but not least, how you can also contribute uh, to the framework. Um, so a few things about myself. Uh, so my name is Eric Bodden. I'm a professor at um, HNI, which is an interdisciplinary research institute at Paderborn University. And I also work um, at Fraunhofer IEM, which is uh, right next door. Fraunhofer is actually Europe's largest research organization. We're about 27,000 people right now. And in Paderborn, we have a center dedicated to uh, me mechatronic systems research. And uh, there we do, uh, in my group, very applied research on secure software engineering, where we team up with a number of uh, companies. I will also be talking a little bit about this later. But let me first talk about Suit. So um, I uh, actually got in touch with Suit around 2002, but it had already been established in 1991 by the Sable Research Group uh, at McGill University, specifically also by Laurie Hendren and Clark Verbrugger. And if you don't remember what 1999 looked like, it's actually quite a while ago. Uh, so that uh, is the kind of music that was hip back then. Um, I still certainly remember these times, maybe some of you uh, don't really anymore. Um, but back then, uh, yeah, that's when Suit was uh, first conceived and um, was also an influential tutorial at PLDI 2003, where the framework was explained to a lot, number of people who actually picked up the technology. Um, back then, Suit was mainly uh, used actually um, for the following purposes. So it was uh, actually for ahead of time optimization. So there was this idea that as you can see here on the top, you would uh, sort of read class files from different sources. Back then they still had modern languages such as Scava and Small Eiffel. Um, and uh, then you would read this into the Jimple intermediate representation, which is Suits primary IR. You would optimize uh, the code and then generate bytecode from it, and then you would execute it using a number of different options. Um, today, Suit is uh, being used for different purposes. So by now, uh, Suit is heavily used, uh, for instance, for bug detection, vulnerability detection, or program understanding. So that means the demands have also shifted quite a bit, and the framework has changed a little bit with that. Um, there's now also support for Android has been there since 2011 and I would say that Suit is uh, probably still uh, the most heavily used program analysis framework for not just Java but also Android um, and there are a number of extensions uh, for Android support such as Flowdroid. Um, Suit also has a large and even still growing user base so uh, it's literally uh, thousands of people I think who have looked into Suit and uh, several hundred at, at least who are using it right now and it also has a number of commercial deployments uh, I will talk about a couple in the end and it's LGPL licensed. What does Suit look like internally? So um, we have an intermediate free address code representation, like I said, uh, which is called Jimple. And what's nice about it is it is relatively high level. So that means uh, you can read Jimple code just as you could also read Java code. It's fairly easy to understand. You can even write it in a textual form if you like. Um, and I think that's what also to some extent makes Suit very popular. There are other frameworks such as Vala, who also have a similar IR, but they are not that, that easy to read and understand. So um, that's a nice point I, I find about Suit. Um, then also we have a number of uh, rather powerful call graph analysis. So we have all these standard algorithms in there that you may or may not have heard of, such as uh, call hierarchy analysis and RDA, VTA, and the standard inclusion-based uh, pointer uh, analysis, Anderson-style analysis that's also used to generate call graphs on the fly. And then there are special extensions to this. So for instance, we have Flowdroid, uh, which allows you not only to do taint analysis on Android applications, but also more importantly, allows you to create an at least reasonable call graph for most Android apps. 
Um, it's not perfect, but uh, it does a very good job at this. Um, we also have a number of points to analysis integrated. So there's the standard Anderson style analysis that I already mentioned, but there's also a refinement based analysis that was contributed um, yeah, already like 14 years ago, um, which basically allows you to refine um, results of the Anderson style analysis with additional context information. And that can sometimes be very useful. Um, 10 years later, one of my PhD students, Johannes, he came up with an analysis called Boomerang, um, which uh, also has many advantages. So it's a demand-driven analysis, which you only call in certain situations where you need precise pointer information. Um, but then it actually um, creates extremely precise uh, points to info. So in particular, it um, combines um, flow sensitivity with context sensitivity to a very large extent. And so it's really one of the most precise analysis that you uh, can get at the moment. On top of that, um, so once you have your core graph and your points to information, you can then conduct interprocedural data flow analysis using a range of different solvers. And um, we have uh, two solvers in particular that are meant to be um, for rather uh, simple problems such as taint analysis. They can be solved in frameworks such as IFDS and IDE. And there's a solver called Heros, which is basically an extension to suit that allows you to solve these. Uh, Flowdroid does something similar specifically for Android. In particular, it does a taint analysis for Android. So that's also very popular. And uh, lately, um, we have been implementing two systems called Ideal and a version of it um, also based on top of so-called synchronized pushdown systems. Um, that uh, bring more precision and also uh, more speed to the table than Flowdroid and also these other IFDS and IDE implementations. Um, I can't go into too much detail here, um, but uh, basically uh, you are encouraged to take a look at these two publications that I'm citing here at the bottom. Um, and they basically explain how all of this works. So basically we are transforming uh, the problem of, uh, well, taint analysis, you could say, into uh, a problem that is solved on top of uh, so-called pushdown systems. And there are two pushdown systems here, one that takes care of um, field sensitivity and one that takes care of um, context sensitivities so or calling context strings. And they are synchronized in a way so that you get uh, the best out of both worlds. So. Um, Normally, this is an undecidable problem, so you, you can't have a fully precise solution to this. But we have found a pretty nice approximation that usually approximates in only those places where it's okay to lose some precision. So where um, precision and practice is not really hampered all that much. There are also a number of applications uh, that we have on, on top of what you just saw. So one example I briefly want to show you uh, is a tool called Cognicrypt, which you can also um, download and uh, extend uh, online. So it's an open source tool um, and it has been integrated into Eclipse. And the purpose of Cognicrypt is alerting you if you are using a cryptographic API insecurely and so, or if you're using it incorrectly also. So what you are seeing here, for instance, is we are trying to use a signature class in Java and Cognicrypt is already telling us that we should have called one of the methods init sign or init verify. And uh, because I've commented that out, we are actually not. And now I can actually save this in Eclipse and the analysis will automatically be rerun. Um, and um, now you can see though that it's still not quite happy because uh, we are also still missing the call to this uh, update method that you see down here. So it's basically internally keeping track of a so-called type state um, and it's telling you what kind of methods should have been invoked. And you can now see that it's actually also an interprocedural analysis because now we are using this private key here to initialize the signature. Um, but down here, um, the tool is telling us that we are using an incorrect key size. So 1024 is no longer recommended. And up here, it's actually telling us also that we are using a private key that is improper and is insecure and we should fix that. And uh, we can fix this, right? So for instance, if I enter uh, a higher key size here for the key PR generator, then the analysis will rerun. 
and it will now show us to these info markers that uh, the signature is secure and also the key pair generator down here is being used securely. Um, what you saw here is that the analysis is very rapid and it's actually also pretty precise. So this code could also be spread among several classes interspersed with other code and you would still get similar speed and similar precision. Um, so that's very nice. So we as a community have really come a long way in the last few years to, to make that happen. And um, Suit uh, really provides you core functionalities to build these kinds of tools and algorithms, right? So like I said, there are these da generic data flow servers uh, as extensions to Suit. Um, and it's also very easy to use uh, Suit in a, in a project. So you can just include a Java dependency, for instance, using Maven, Gradle, or SVT, and so on. And then typically use uh, Suit as a command line tool that you extend one way or the other. Um, we also have some integrations into different IDEs, like we just saw. Um, but uh, yeah, typically as a researcher, you're probably most interested in the command line tool. If you need help, we are happy to provide it. Um, so we have a mailing list and an issue tracker um, that are both used heavily. And we try to answer these requests whenever we can. Sometimes it might take a while because uh, there are many and we have uh, also some other obligations, but we, we try to be helpful. Um, Suit itself, um, like I said, it's already 20 years old, but um, we're still heavily working on it and others too. Um, so for instance, there's a government funded research project um, called Future Suit that uh, we are heading. And um, basically it means what you are looking at on the right hand side, right? So Suit has become really this convoluted tool, right? That has lots of bells and whistles and it's really hard to understand how to use it. And uh, also the architecture is not the most modern one by, by current standards. And we are really trying to turn this into this uh, sort of sleek thing that you see on the bottom right. Um, so have a completely new architectures, for instance, that goes without singletons, is a lot more modular and has a lot of um, yeah, support for interesting concepts. Like we want to support multiple scenes. So that basically means you will be able to analyze multiple programs or multiple versions of the same program side by side to do comparative and incremental code analysis um, to, for instance, um, just as one requirement. Um, but in general, this should be more modular and we want to have, um, you know, less legacy in there and best, better testability. Um, we will keep pretty much the Gimple IR. Um, it will be optimized a bit so that it's actually uh, read only by default um, so that uh, we actually get faster access to the data structures that will speed up the analysis. Um, and there are also some, some other things we have in mind. Um, we hope to have a first release still this year. Um, it's already getting fall. I'm not exactly sure whether we will manage, um, but uh, hopefully there will be a first release soon. And also upcoming is a workshop with interested stakeholders. So if you're interested in learning more about this project or if you have some requirements you want to tell us about, uh, please do let me know. And uh, we can see to it that you can also participate in that. Also, um, like I said, so Suit is also gaining quite some traction commercially, and there are a number of companies that have already deployed it. So for instance, Suit is running in one of the largest app stores um, that you may have heard of um, to do some malware triaging. Um, but um, earlier this year, for instance, um, just before the corona uh, virus actually well, was at least known to have spread to the United States, uh, I, together with uh, Gohan and Johannes, we went to New York uh, to visit Amazon Web Services. And they are now also building on top of Suit um, to actually build interesting uh, validation and verification tools. And we basically had a two-day uh, two workshop with them um, to tell them about how to use Suit, how to use uh, the other technologies that I talked about, so that they are enabled to uh, build useful tools on, on top of that. If uh, you are interested in contributing, um, then you're most welcome to do so. So there's uh, the uh, Suit website here again mentioned on the right, and we welcome any contributions. So uh, you are certainly most welcome to file bug reports. 
Even better is if you help us also fix bugs, uh, either your own or uh, bugs mentioned by other people. Uh, some we have marked with this tag good first issue, so that is something you may want to look into if you are not yet an expert on suit. Um, and you know, even more, we even encourage you to actually contribute features. So um, every now and then that happens, and we are very grateful uh, if that uh, you know if people do that actually. Um, but we would like to see more of this. Um, and in general, I can just say static analysis is hard, but uh, it's also a lot of fun to work with such a visible framework. And um, so we certainly encourage you to, to look into it. And uh, eventually, if you do have regular contributions, we will also be more than happy to make you an official committer. So this is not a closed shop development, it's an open source project, and everybody is uh, more than happy to join. With that, I thank you very much, and I'm um, also very happy to still take any questions. Thank you.